<clears throat> Hello there. Sorry, I'm here. <laughs> Happy Friday. Here we go again. Uh, drippy portrait today. With a few exceptions, I'm just a um, bit of experimentation as well today with some charcoal. I usually get rid of the charcoal, but I'm going to add some linear stuff. <clears throat> Show you what I've uh, just what I mean, some kind of textures underneath and then um, we're drawing the head as well in charcoal and then using a pen rub out most of the lines that we use to make, get the features uh, so your pen is just picking up the eyes, nose, mouth, shape of the head and things like that but then I want quite a bit of um, texture, not smudging charcoal all over the place really, not, not everywhere but I might use a little bit in places and uh, <clears throat> it should become part of the painting. So that's, that's the idea I've got today. Uh, <clears throat> it's a combination of uh, the charcoal, then the acrylic, and then rubbing out the acrylic to get the highlights on the features and things like that. I'm going to go quite strong with uh, some of the colours, I think. Our colours are going to be um, red sienna, they're all acrylics. Bird Sierra, Alizarine, Ultramarine. I've got some purple because it goes well with cadmium yellow or process yellow. Okay, so that's for my glazes. Um, big brush like that. Plenty of water. So you need a lot of uh, clean water to start with. And then uh, we're going to kind of use the damp cloth, cloth when it's dried off so we can take out the highlights on the features. So it's got this... Um, Weird expression, she looks like she's uh, really thinking or she's in a bit of a mood, but uh, whatever you bring out from your painting, your, you know, you're the creative one, you're just using this as a reference. So we're trying to make something aesthetically pleasing. Okay, uh, I've got my hair dryer plugged in because we need this to uh, dry things off quite a bit. Uh, I'm trying not to go over time today, but I've um, got things to do this afternoon and then uh, hopefully... Uh, we can finish it off if we don't get sands today. I've also got a bit of green. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to use it yet, but I want to splatter some green. And I'm also going to uh, turn my board around uh, just to uh, get the paint running in different directions as well. Okay, that's my general idea. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, sketch the head with some willow charcoal. Uh, we can rub this off with, uh, with some tissue later and a rubber. And then... Uh, use the uh, reference um, as a for painting okay so we need she needs to cover the whole of the picture more or less so i've got this lovely kind of shape of the head yeah uh, as it comes out nice and central i'll get the, uh, most of the head on i think and uh you know, keep that kind of shape we want we want everything angular to this kind of thing so it's got a slight slight angle on her head like that so she's tilted just a little bit lots of little lines one of them's got the right yeah that's the way we're looking at it don't try and draw the shape of the head just draw an egg and then in the middle of that we've got the eye position which is usually in the centre one like that but because she's look, we're looking up at her this becomes a curved line okay the reason being you see more of the face and less of the forehead and that's what that does then we can put the sockets in uh, which is we're going to remove all these uh, measurement lines okay so that's what I mean by uh, getting rid of them then we've got this low down iris she's actually looking uh, downwards at you because her head is higher so if you wanted to just block that in and then do the half moon shape of her eye and her eyelids you know so you got that nice uh, partly closed eye and the eyelid is is about here as well so it's uh, you've only got a little bit of bottom eyelid and then when you're looking at uh, the shape of her eyebrows quite big yeah so we can put those in we can just draw them like that and then we're looking at the nose, so the nose is about halfway where it sits on the face, but uh, the tip of the nose is about here. Like that. 
and you're seeing that lovely kind of wedge shape okay and the nostrils quite big because you're looking up the nostrils uh, and, that, and that leads you to the filtering bit of the face so we've got the U shape again uh, you're looking up so the U shape becomes smaller and the middle muscle becomes bigger on the lip like that keep everything lined up that's what we need to do okay uh, keep that inside the eye so this is going to be where the um, inside of the tear duct is going to be okay and then we've got this shape so uh, we look we drop a line down from here and you can see the width of the mouth on both sides because she's looking straight at you okay she's just tilted but she's you're looking up at the model so that's why you're getting this shape like that and that's the mouth you're getting the middle muscle there quite a big shape like that and then you're getting just a little bit of the bottom lip like that and that will give you a hair expression can you see and she's got quite a big chin because the chin is the nearest thing to you okay uh, so now I'm just gonna draw in my negative space the hair is on top of that egg so we just draw the shape of it because I'm going to splatter most of that as well uh, it comes down into her eyes more or less so you don't get much around the forehead uh, like that and this comes down the side of her face there and that's where you get this um, angle this angle for the shape of the jawline like and the neck so you've got this neck coming from here uh, and there you can see and then if you want to put a polar neck in you can sketch that in slightly like that and then she goes off the picture <coughs> okay so you want to do something like that you don't have to and just this is the bit where i'm just kind of making up some shapes go the hair uh the bottom of her ear is actually on level with the mouth there you can see because you get a line kind of curving where the bottom of the nose would be so that is the ear area and that's the earlobe area so that's all you see and that's the dark area for her hair mm -hmm. uh, uh. so that's okay um just going to add some uh, marks and lines really uh, soft areas you know where we can disappear not much in the features because I don't want it to get too dirty uh, uh, but this uh, this kind of area at the back could be nice and dark so that's why I'm, I'm adding in there I know I heard going to be dark but uh, we can just block that in a little bit uh, I don't usually do this when we do this uh, portrait chair but uh, I thought today I'm going to use a little bit of charcoal as well. We have got a rubber as, as well, because we'll rub out later. Um, and I'm going to use a pen now, because she's looking, it's that format of looking at me. Uh, I think that's underneath the nose, because charcoal gives you this lovely kind of quick way of creating uh, shadows, uh, chiaroscuro effect, uh, without using paint, you see. So that's why it's a good way of, uh, a good drawing way of painting actually before you actually start um so we want some tissue i'm just going to rub that out uh, and i want the pen so i can draw things so i'm going to do half this uh, this pupil bit uh, it's quite dark so i can just block it in uh the half moon shape uh the eyebrows that go away from you so like that yeah nice and loose half of uh, again the block that in that comes into the corner of the tear duct and you've got two marks there you've got this nostril which is quite a, a big shape because it's underneath the nose okay like that you can block that in if you wanted it's going to be dark anyway and then the, the lips so the bottom lip you're getting this lovely shape like that corners of the mouth quite uh, foot, uh, quite dark at the corner nice dark in the middle uh, you can see the sides of the bottom lip so you can keep that in and then we just want a bit of a line just to tell us where the jaw and her neck are going to be you can put the ear in as well if you wanted to 
then the hair is just all this mass of colour that we're going to put on like that uh, and, and things like that so it's nice and erratic uh, we've got that ear and the jawline on this side uh, going into the neck uh, so this is kind of a, a collar as we can use something like that uh, and I should be able to get to, to rub out the lines and uh, make that part of the face quite uh, quite nice and blendy all right <coughs> so just rubbing out my marks in the head really that's it um, I'm not trying to rub everything out because I want to keep some of my uh, charcoal okay I want to keep some of those shapes so uh, but I'm not putting the darks in with the charcoal I'm just putting some of the shapes on splatters or whatever I can splatter paint onto uh, water onto that as well and just using this pen to uh, give me the thickness of a bottom eyelid because because we're looking up we get we're seeing that shape and it's kind of disappearing into the overlapping eyelid if you can see what I mean you're getting that nice dark area like that coming from each side and it's quite dark in the corners of her eyes well where the tear ups are so you know you could keep those in keep that angle uh, down here from the forehead and the hair which is going to be everywhere okay um, and that'll do it I think go about this bit and the ears what have you uh, use the rubber now get rid of the rest yeah uh, mainly the lines go on and see the lines really not not going there um, nice shape it's going to be dark under the eyes anyway I will put a block of tone in okay, I'm, I'm kind of still here thinking should I, should I, should I not but I'll put a block of tone in under that eye my easel falling bit sorry I'm going to push it off right under that eye right, like that so I've got this shape of this head now that's similar to the picture and that'll do me stand back yeah stand over here and um, let's have a drink she's looking at us so that's okay um fix it a little bit so I'm just spraying it because uh, I've got a bit of charcoal okay so I don't really want to uh, to uh, <coughs> fix it too much it's just to hold the charcoal a little bit because I can rub I can rub it out as well so that's uh, that will help with uh, rubbing out the darks um should have rubbed that out too but sorry it doesn't matter it'll come off right the beauty of being on gesso paper is you can rub it you can rub through anything that's over the top so now I'm looking at the head and we've got this lovely yellow I'm going to mix some water with this yellow it's quite I want it quite thick not too thick because you need to rub it out but you want it thick enough to uh, to make colour you don't want it too thin I've got some alizarine as well and some burnt sienna so the alizarine is quite a dark strong colour actually alizarine. I've got a bit, can you clean your brush? If you want any yellow on your brush, if you've got uh, ultramarine blue, and then we've got some purple, which we can splatter in later. Okay, I've got some small brushes here as well. Got some white paint, just in case you need it. Um, pastel, whatever, kind of mixed media. This is the change from the norm, really. I'm not, I'm not just sticking to one uh, medium, not just, uh, you know, using a bit of uh, paint and charcoal and also uh, pastel if, possible, if, if, if we need to anyway, I'm going to put the colours on clean your brush first whatever you had on last you're going to still be in there which is purple and I don't want that because I want to pick up the yellow so the yellow is going to hit that side of the face uh, it's also going to go across the head 
and things like that, which goes into my alizarine now, which is on that side of the face, okay? Because that's quite dark. Uh, I want it to be transparent. I want it to go through the picture. I want it to look erratic, yeah? Uh, I've got my blue now, and I put my blue on to create these shapes. Now, this is where I need to kind of be quite quick and uh, stop the paint from running too much, yeah, across the head because I don't want it to cover all the face up. And I've got the nice colours like that, yeah. So I, oh, it's got, it's got in my eyes and my hair. Um, turn that back. Okay, so we've got this kind of lovely, <coughs> lovely blendy tones. Um, I've got a dry brush here as well. We can use the dry brush to remove or blend out any drips or runs you've got in a, in a head, <laughs> just like that. So we've got this, these erratic kind of marks. Okay, I'm going to use a little brush as well. Uh, just to splatter some colour in. Um, I want that splatter to be in a forehead, so I'm going to use a hairdryer just to stop, stop the paint from running a little bit. Like that, like that. Stop it running in the I've got enough there now. Right. I don't like too much. Oh yeah. I'm just having to see the name of the uh, record, so it doesn't matter too much about it looking like it, you know. So uh, get your brush. I'm using a bit of green in this one uh, and a bit of blue. So it's quite thick pigment. Uh -huh. Okay. Now look at your picture. I'll keep it up there. I'll keep it. Uh, so where you can see it, do a bit of this kind of thing, the splattering, because we want that to be a nice thick tone of value in a, the side of a head, okay? Just be careful with your uh, your furniture, okay? And just creating some kind of shape that's not actually a complete representation of what I'm looking at but uh, it's just the shape okay like that. I want that side of a hair to be quite uh, quite dark all right uh, you can dab off any spots you've done that are gonna interfere with your rubbing out because you don't want that Okay, that's quite nice and dark, so I'll keep that there. Um, blend it, yeah. Rub this in if you want. <coughs> you can blend things. You can scumble things. Yeah, like this. Give you different shapes, uh, angles, whatever. <coughs> Just be really, really out there with it. Don't try and be too soft. Okay, stand back. Now while I'm looking, I'm going to add a few shadows. I can do some drawing over this side, uh, I quite like that. Uh, and I want to keep white as well. And I can always go darker with the hair if I need to. So I'll get me another brush, put this back, because I do need it to hand, really, for my reference. Uh, get me a smaller brush, which is a soft one. Uh, I'm going to use this for some glaze, some uh, dark glazes, which are, are going to be kind of uh, the shapes under the eye, can you see? Like that, because it's quite dark down there, down there, and then you've got the inside of the nose as well, so that's that's quite a dark shape, so I'm just going to blend that. Like that. We can always take that off, so it doesn't matter too much. So I'm using just a bit of alizarine and 
tiny amount of blue to give me these shadows and you can do the same on this side because they're in shadow as well so you got this lovely shape around the eye like that. <coughs> and a bit underneath so you can put some underneath as well like that. Uh, <coughs> the eyebrow itself is a dark shape um, we can use some purple for that uh, I'm just adding this very dark tone uh, and it disappears into that area so I can add a dark tone there uh, and that goes across the, the head there so you can keep that eyebrow looking at you if you like what you look do the same thing with the lips so uh, the middle of the lip the bottom the top lip is quite dark corners of the mouth are quite dark Okay, don't let it run. Actually, like Dracula. Uh, don't let it run too much. The side of the nose is going to be quite dark. And then the tip. So you've got that angle. So this is a glaze. I'm glazing over something that's already there. And it's going to be a little bit darker. That's all. Uh, looking around the nostril, you've got a glaze as well. You can see just underneath, and you've got that shape there and then there's a bit here because that's in shadow and it comes into the filtering bit uh, uh, and this is the dark bit anyway so that'll do for where the chin is so we can use that uh, and then a hair across the forehead like I just said earlier that's okay uh, leaving that dark area around the forehead and I just want to add a little bit of uh, dark colour <coughs> Brush down so I'm picking up some thick paint which has not got any water with it more or less and I just want to pick out this shape here at the side of it here actually which uh, just brings out this negative you see like that. these things like that are just give you the shape of the face and it's just at the back of the ear we can see a little bit there as well and a bit of a hurt at the back. The tally up to you, boring down here again. The time I wash the coat, pause down. The eyes, again, very dark and the nostrils. So I just get a bit of blue and red. Do the same with the eyes and the nostrils, like that. Um, take the light off at the bottom. That's right. I'm going to use a cloth in a bit, so it doesn't matter. And then we've got this lovely dark of an iris, half covered. Eye. So I'm using the tip of the brush for this. Yep. Uh, same with this one. Half covered eye into the corners. So this is kind of just looking at you. Yeah. Like that. Looking down the nose at you. Uh, corners of the mouth. Like that. And there. Uh, And the hair on this side, I'm quite happy with that, so it doesn't matter too much. I can use uh, a bit of white, or I can just leave it as it is. Okay, so I need to dry that off, because I need to try and make the face come out of the picture. That's a snake, yeah. So I'm using the hair dryer again. Okay, 
So that's enough to, once it's dry, you can't you won't wipe off, you'll have to rub it off. So that's, that's the reason you do that. And uh, now I can get my damp cloth, put it on the floor. Uh, <coughs> getting um, my damp cloth is there to remove the highlights. Okay. And uh, I've got highlights in places where I've also got colour, so that we can use it. So the idea is to create these shapes that uh, are accidental, and then we can use the cloth to put in the light tones on the features. Uh, so we're just using the image to put the uh, tone on there. So right in the corner of the eye, uh, it's quite light there. And there, yeah. Uh, the bottom eyelid is light. Like a bit slower. Go into the cheekbone. Like this, it's taking a bit of that colour off. Uh, and as it comes down the side of the nose here, like that. okay, and that is into the nose because it's catching some light. And you get a light while well, it's all the way up. Um, and it blends on this side, it's a little bit darker. And then the tip of the nose here, I've got a white spot just there. You see, that makes the nose come forward. We've got reflected lights underneath where the nostril is, just there, and the corner of the nostril there. Once you start doing these little shapes and lights, it, 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 it takes on its own, it takes on the form, okay? So, yeah, that's what we're after. These little, we want the head to kind of just start appearing. So if I, for instance, use this for my eyelids, because the eyelids are copying the shape of the eyeball underneath, and that's why you're seeing that light area, you can see, it's right in the centre. So the eyes are coming down, you've got the same thing here, coming down, a bit of a gap and there's another one, just like that, looking down and always at you, kind of thing. Uh, and this blends into the cheekbone, okay, and uh, it's a little bit darker there, that's all. So as it comes into the cheekbone, it's going lighter. Beautiful. Uh, here, on this side we're getting a little bit of light. It's mainly um, left as colour, because that gives it its value. So the colours have their own tonal value. So that's the reason we, we leave them, okay? And that's the reason we do the splashing and everything. So it gives you the tonal values, and then we just take out the lighter bits. Uh, and if you do it correctly, it should start to, start to see, start to look very similar to what we're working from, actually. So that comes down here. Look around that shape where the filter is, and then the corners of the head. Some areas, if you get nice shapes, they might be better just leaving them, even though they're wrong, you know what I mean? So. Because it all adds to this um, spontaneity type of stuff. So the other side of the filter on here, well, light because the light's catching it. Uh, this side of the face is a little bit lighter. Yeah. Like that. Just a little bit, nothing too much. Bottom eyelid is there. Uh, a little lighter there, like that. <coughs> Reflected lights. Are the lights that are not highlights uh, in between you can strengthen the forehead area to make it a little bit lighter if you want to <coughs> i can just leave it and do a hair afterwards so uh, these little shapes are quite interesting because this is what we want these kind of areas of uh, splattered paint and the head just kind of is forward from it. So we want this to blend into a cheek at the side of the head. So this side is not very light. 
it's in a bit of a shadow and we can glaze that as well we can glaze over it later to go a little bit darker my nose is getting nostrils getting a bit reflected light like that and then that goes up into the cheek all right you just have to be careful uh, the bottom lip all the way across really are both muscles and I've got this um, this rough texture where the lips give this kind of puckering effect and that's hard, really hard to do it then your chin you've got your lovely kind of dimples and this comes straight across there then you get your dimples and you get the cleft in your chin <coughs> and then it goes over this way and disappears into the shadows can you see uh, um, we can just do the side of the nose a little bit more light to get the light on it that's it and uh, blend this so there's two colours there and they're both the same tonal value so you blend them together like that this is coming into the neck area which has got a beautiful kind of highlight anyway so that's in the right place and that's what I want we can go around the negative space of this the hair at the back uh, we can pull out some lights I'm not, I love this and I love this so I, I don't really want to lose it yeah um, we can go around that here a little bit and blend around the cheek as well because that's quite a strong we can get a reflected light there but see how it works if it don't work we can I put it back so if we have a bit of reflection there it gives the form to the head okay uh, this I quite like I'm gonna leave it as it is as well in fact it's not far off finished so we can have a, another drink and a look through the lens um, Rewind it right and you'll see the beginning. Uh, <laughs> but thanks for watching. We've made it again. Um, it wants to be a lot darker in some of these little areas where the shadows are. So alizarine, a touch of blue. Now when I do do anything like glazing we do it kind of quickly I don't want to be too we'll see you see so we just do a quick kind of glaze and, and let that dry that's a bit wet now so let that dry that's going up into the side of his head we can strengthen other areas if you want to use the same glaze uh, to make other areas slightly darker it will help you like the inside of the nose for instance quite a nice shape there uh, a little bit on this side uh, it goes a little bit darker you see in the corners of its eye <coughs> uh, it goes a little bit darker over here so this is where you can add a bit of detail if you want to uh, like that um, we can add some shadows which are going to be these lovely blues if you like in the mouth in the chin area uh, and we can draw the shape using a bit of red and green of uh, the jawline here because it's quite, uh, it's quite an obvious jawline, so I'll just blend that in. Okay, do um, I'm going to use some compressed charcoal, I think. I quite like it as it is. This is what I mean about spontaneity. We tend to overwork things. If you can keep it spontaneous, <coughs> you get a much better feeling for the subject. Even though I probably finished, nearly finished early. <laughs> um, yeah, 
you you ruin it by keep going. So top an eyelid, which is very dark. So this is compressed charcoal. Okay. Look at the nostrils, they're very dark as well. Corners of his mouth. It is a he, I think. It might be a she. Sorry. Corners of the mouth. Bend it up. <coughs> no, it's a she. A little gap between the lip. Okay. Uh, some of the hair. hanging down we can create a lovely negative there which is the shape of the hair against the face brings out that shape we've got a lovely negative here again which is her hair in the background these little areas that we can use same over this side bit of compressed charcoal compressed charcoal okay so here we've got the shape of his turtleneck bit of turtleneck uh, we can draw this as well see what you want to put in and what you don't want to put in. My mate, the eyebrows are a little bit darker because they are darker in the middle there. Same over this side. Just a little bit. Bend it. Yeah. I've done that eye, we'll do this one. I forgot the other eye. Lovely. Dark. Iris. Uh, we can't see any colour. Um, I could use a bit of white as well if you need to. Okay, we want that colour going into the shape of the corner of the eye because it just kind of goes a little bit lighter there and then it goes lighter there and then it blends into the rest of the cheek. <coughs> Little shapes like that, you can't see the whites of his eyes. Uh, so we'll keep them as they are. We've got some reflected lights on the top lip, middle muscle of the top lip. Which just gives you that shape like that. Okay. And we're lighting this bit now. So we get more light on the face. Uh, this side of the face. Right. Uh, want to use some white pastel? Yeah, that's okay. Lovely chin. It's, it's one of the nearest things to you, so it does start to come forward a bit. Yeah, which is what we want. And the fulcrum bit. Uh, side of the nose bit. Top lip. It's got a spot on his face. We can use that highlight for his ear. We can just keep it as a shape. It's quite interesting actually. Uh, a bit of light on this ear. Just to make it stand out. I like that anyway, that splash and bit. Red and green. Complimentary. Top of the eyelid. Eyebrows, uh, just straighten that up and keep it lighter on the forehead. In between the gaps, if you can. Like that. And then, yeah. I like the subject. I'm just thinking about subjects and you don't have to keep picking something pretty. In fact, 
It really annoys me after a while. I'm trying to do things pretty because I'm trying. I'm wondering what people will think. And then I start thinking, I should do them just for me, really. Which is what I do when I paint them. Anyway. Um, just a nice little <laughs> reflective light there. And a bit, it goes a little bit later there as well. So that will do, I think. Keep the softness of the jaw. Don't have it too hard edged. And uh, we need some white pastel. You could have used some white paint. Okay. You could use white paint to pick out. In fact, I'm going to pick out some negative space in the background. Okay. So I've got this lovely soft brush again. Clean it. That's why I've got a bit of tan. Uh, and then I'll put my negative space in here. Goes around the uh, around the neck. And we can blend it so it goes light and then it goes a little bit darker. But it gives you a shape at the back of the head. You can break it up. Okay? You can do the same over here. Or you can use the white just to give you the yellow. We get um, I think I might as well use white actually, white paint because I can keep it. I don't need to use a hairspray over it then if I put past on. So the light here goes inside the nose. Sorry, it's picking up something else. Inside that nose there and then along here as well. And then here we've got this little shirt top right that's that ball on the end of his nose just soften it a bit don't want to make it too bright uh, the eyes just on that rim uh, right on the tip of the eyelid like that. Okay. Uh, in the corners and where the tear duct is, you'll always get that little bit of light, even though it's not showing. Uh, your bottom eyelid, a little bit, both sides. <laughs> Okay, and then we've got we've got the uh, let me start using my I don't want to cover anything up that that uh, I've got in as an accident. I'm just mixing a bit of red with this and painting the negative space around that nostril just to bring it back a bit and we've got a little bit of negative here so it's a bit of purple really a bit of glycerine and, uh, and white like that that'll do there I can use my paint up and uh, in, in kind of areas like this. So I, I love just when the water makes a mark, you can actually copy the mark so it joins into this shape. That's the idea. Uh, okay. And this. Uh, shoulder shape if you want to tie up to you okay 
You can uh, quite happy with that. <laughs> Charcoal, we can still blend it a bit. We've used some um, to delineate it. Is that a word? These shapes. Um, I can also use this for this bottom of his turtle neck. the idea you see <laughs> keep the drips as part of the picture put some detail in like his hair I can still see my pen underneath you see so I know where those lights and darks are uh, And the shape of the head. Probably this turned into a fella, but <laughs> I don't know. Actually. <coughs> and there you go. I've got to clean my hands. Let it dry. And look at it. You can do all this. You can soften these areas. You can soften the paint. You can blend smudge, whatever. So it disappears. So this is a bit harsh. Get rid of it. You don't really want anything going off the picture. Because your eyes follow it. Uh -huh. It's like an earring now. <coughs> uh, let's keep a little bit of This is my new style from now on. Okay, thank you for watching. And um, I know he's got a, a wild hair there. Or she has just turned into a fellow. That's why I keep calling it. A wild hair there. But it's a girl. Okay. Could be a boy. <coughs> if you wanted to make it a bit more obvious about his eyes and things. Uh, I should probably spoil it now. I'm just mixing a bit of blue with my white. So you can put some light in his eyes. That just actually brings him to life, as we know. There's no light there because he's looking down at us. There is white on, uh, not white, where the yellow is there, it's blue. So you can put the blue bit in. This looks nice against the yellow, actually. Complimentary. He's got an arrogant look about him. Right, I'll take my tape off. Need some ready for some to, to eat. We can varnish that. Um, don't forget to spray. I've, not, I've used a bit of compressed, so I would spray it again. Yeah, I, can, I forgot then. So, uh, it don't matter if it's not dry. This actually gives it a varnish. It's a type of varnish as well. You see how bright the colours go? It's quite nice. Actually. I'll let it dry. Don't want it running. Getting a bit kind of uh, heart fatigue, if you know what I mean. In the last few days, I'm thinking, what can I do? Because I'm getting a bit bored with what I'm doing. But now uh, I can do more of these. 
Okay. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm sorry I'm a bit early, but I did start kind of bag on time today. And it's not taking as long as um, as I thought it might. Uh, and I'll put it online. And you can always rewind it. Catch up. Okay. Thanks again. Have a good weekend. And I'll see you on uh, Tuesday, probably, for um, the last, well, no, there's two more yet, 11 and 12. Okay, thank you. Bye for now.